We'll just begin the session with praying in tongues for a minute. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you. We glorify you. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we're coming to you because you have loved us first. So we're coming to you, hoping we can learn to be like you. Father, we adore you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, we praise you. We adore you. Jesus, we love you because you loved us first. Because you were the one who came, being God and having everything. You humbled yourself down to us so that we could have been safe. We could be safe. We could have been taken away from the snare of the devil. You have captured, have captured death. Everything is done for us. We are only to come to you and be resting on your feet. Holy Spirit, we know you have already taken control of this session. We know you have already cleansed us before we came in here. Before we even open our mouth, you have already put in our heart and in our mind whatever is going to come out of our mouth, because it is not us who is doing this job, but it's you. It is you through us who is controlling our body. Holy Spirit, we thank you because you have given us the opportunity to be a laborers for this beautiful work that we have been chosen, elected, anointed for. Father, we thank you for this beautiful anointing that you have given us this beautiful knowledge that you are teaching and training us to be your ambassadors jesus we love you thank you for you have chosen us to be your ambassadors to go out and run this beautiful race of faith race of hope race of love telling others that you have never, you and your father have never been upset with them, but you are willing to accept each one of us as we are. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you. We open our hearts. We believe you have. Go to each one of the houses where the, pe the people is listening to this teaching and you have already converted their heart into good soils so that they will receive the gospel today and their life will be transformed. And everyone who is listening to this teaching of the Holy Spirit through Brother Jensen will be able to be a doer of the word and not only a listener of the word. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus, we make this prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So yesterday, we, we're going to start with it. Um, recap um yesterday the topic was uh ambassador of, of jesus christ um proclaiming the good news of the gospel and how is that the love of the father is so infinite towards us so papa started saying 
we were speaking on the previous on on, on the previous teaching about being ambassadors of Christ, and Papa said there is there is this beautiful work that we're doing of being an ambassador and carrying the new the good news, but it's God who first speaks to the ambassador, so then the ambassador can take the message to whoever it is out there that we can speak to them and convert their hearts to the Lord. So before the ambassador goes out to speak, it's actually God who, who will speak to the ambassador first. Because without God's anointed, we cannot even try and convert a hardened heart. It's only God's love who can break the hardness of heart. And someone who has a heart that has been hardened because of unbelief would actually fight, would actually fight the message, would actually fight the gospel when we're trying to preach it to them. But it's God who goes first, it's God who goes before us and anointed anoints us to have this beautiful gift of being their ambassador, but also anoints the other person, the one who is listening to us, so that they can receive the gospel. It is the anointing of God that is pleading, that is pleading. So Papa was saying to us, just take it seriously and imagine that the Father is pleading, is pleading to each one of us, just like the passage of the prodigal son. And imagine that the Father is coming to you and he's saying, my son, my love, my loved one, my, my, my dear son, why is it that you want to stay all dirty and, and feeding swans when you can come to my house where I have everything for you? And the son is giving his back to the father and the father is just pleading again and again and saying, my son, my love, my dear son, please come back. I will forgive you all. I cannot live without you. I must have you back. And the, the son is in complete denial because his heart has, has hardened. And we have been talking about this a couple of the couple of teachings before that when we are lost in our self-centeredness, the devil wants to make us believe that we are the right one. And I envisioned myself while I was doing the review on this very passage, because when we think that we are being successful, successful in the world, at some point when we're getting lost and when we're getting away from, from the Lord, usually our parents or someone in our family who really knows us will tell us, you're getting lost and we will look at them as if they're completely wrong and we know what we're doing, but they cannot understand what, what is that we're doing. And it's only the devil who convinces us that we are the, the ones that are always right. And when you think that you are the, the one who is only right, it's because you're in self-centeredness and your heart has hardened. That was happened. I'm saying it with all the property because I went through that. And that's why I can envision, I can envision the father coming after and saying, my love, my love, come back, come back. I accept you. I will forget, forgive all that you have done. Why do you want to be all down and dirty if I can give you everything? So Papa was telling to us that the Father is waiting for us to have a fist, to have a fist in the house when we return instead of us being starving out. And the first thing that the Father does is that he asks the servants to take away the, the ropes that are all broken, and he asked us to be clothed with new ropes. That's the first thing that the Father does for us. He cleans us, and he takes away that dirtiness out of us. So Papa was, uh, was talking to us about uh, the experience that he had in Ireland. He said he went to Ireland, and, and he experienced this himself of a man having um, gone through an experience when he, he was younger that traumatized him 
and he was not willing to go back to church. And he said, no matter how much the, the father was pleading to these men to go back, this man said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever go inside of a church. So Papa was pleading to us that in Ireland, they have these beautiful um, custom of going out with a lamb and they go and meet strangers, inviting them to the church. And they will tell them, just come into the church and light a candle and go. And they do that while people inside is praying and interceding, praying and interceding for the people who comes and light the candle so that their hearts will be converted and be turned back to the Lord. But when Papa was out, he encountered this, uh, this son of God. Papa said that the son of God was bigger and stronger than him. And when he invited this son of God to go inside of the church, he, uh, being traumatized and going under so much pain, he was uh, treating Papa really poorly. He was abusing Papa. And instead of Papa responding poorly to him, he was he was uh, pleading like the Lord was is pleading for us. He was pleading and he listened to him for 15 minutes or more. And when he finished, Papa said, now that you had told me all that, shall we go inside and light a candle? And then the man just went abusive again. And Papa said that he stood there. He looked at him and he said, now can we go inside of the church and light a candle? And here's what the men said, what kind of men are you? And Papa only replies to him, I'm here because Jesus loves you. And there is what when the men said, I don't have a problem with Jesus. My problem is with the church. So he opened his heart and he uh, told Papa that he went through a really bad experience when, when he was a child and he hated the church all his life after that. So Papa said, today's the day for you to reconcile. Just as the passage that we're reading on, on the on the passage that we were reading before where the father is pleading to us in the prodigal son, when the father is pleading to the prodigal son to come back. And Papa was telling to this beautiful son of God, today is your day. And he said, I will never go back inside of that church or any church. So instead of going and giving up, Papa said, okay, can we pray together? They did a prayer. And then at the end, Papa gave him the candle and said, can you go home and light this candle and give your heart to Jesus? And this man stood there looking at Papa that even though he was really abusive, the only thing that he received back was love. And this is how Papa was telling us yesterday that this is how ambassadors should go out and represent the love of Jesus. The second example that was given to us was uh, this beautiful son of God as well that came to us for a few, uh, a few euros. And Papa said, I will give it to you, but I, I want to pray for you as well. And after he gave his permission and said, yes, I don't know, I don't mind. Papa did this beautiful prayer saying, Father, I, cur I curse, the curse of the poverty has been destroyed in the son of God life. He's your son. And I thank you, Lord, for this course is gone. Your love is flowing into him. He has received your, your son, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That was the second example of how Papa said that we as an ambassador can go out. We can help people. And when we want to collaborate, always, always, always have the vision that whoever you're helping is going to go out of that situation, curse that poverty, and envision them being victorious and coming back into the Lord. That was the second example of how is it that an ambassador should behave. Papa was asking us, and the, in the parable of the prodigal son, the prodigal son was wearing dirty rags. So what do you think that those dirty rags represent? That was the question yesterday. So the son was living with the pigs after spending the 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 money that his father has given him, his inheritance. 
and he was living with the pigs and wearing rags. And those rags symbolized that he was dead in his trespasses and sin. Again, the rags symbolizing that symbolize that we are dead in trespasses and sin. And that is why that the first thing that the father does is to say, take off his clothes and give him the bed's rope. And the father hugs his son in spite of the trespasses and he accepts his son. I can only envision myself with the love of, of the Lord when we have fallen so many times and he's still pleading for us to come back, to come back. Even our, our parents who are in the flesh have, have, have been so patient with us, having loved us as a sons or daughters that I can I cannot even wow I cannot even envision how was the father able to to see that his son was getting crucified and it was only for the love it was only because of the vision the vision that he was having that that was coming after that and all the souls that were going to be saved this is how the ambassadors are supposed to go out and minister to those who are are rebelled right now to the Lord or are lost. This is how Jesus explained the love of his father, that even when Adam rebelled against his father, the father came in search of Adam. The father came, the father came and said, where are you? The same father is asking to us today, is pleading to us to return to him because he's the one who has loved us. He is the one who has everlasting love for us. God is calling every sinner back because he does not want anyone to be lost. And this is what God did when we read, but when Adam fell, he came to the garden of Eve and he said, where are you? Where are you? And they were hidden. The Adam hid behind a tree and God, Papa was saying yesterday that God sacrificed a lamb and he took the, the flesh, the skin of the animal to cover the knob. Papa said yesterday, the Bible doesn't say we don't know what kind of animal it is, but I believe that could have been a lamb because the lamb is the, grand, the great ambassador that God sent for the whole humankind, who is Jesus Christ, our greatest ambassador. It is through Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven. Our sins have been washed and we are ambassadors for Christ in Christ. So it was the message that was given to us yesterday that the Christ came as an ambassador, but he's not an ambassador anymore. He's gone to heaven. But he had given us now this office. He has given us this ministry. He's gone to heaven, but we are the one who stand in his positions so that we can go to the sons of men to proclaim the gospel. We cannot give them peace, but we can proclaim the gospel. And it's when through the gospel, they find their way back to the Father and they find their way back into Christ, that they can experience the peace. And we have started this series just explaining that the peace of God, the peace with God, the peace, it's, it's so this understanding has been coming deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's not the, the main message here is that it has never been intended for us to keep this message, but to go out because the main reason why we're coming here today is to let you know that the Lord is preparing each one of us, He's cleaning each one of us. He's appointed us, He has anointed us. The Lord is saying, I am giving you my word so that you are ambassadors for Christ. You go out and you speak on my son's behalf. So Papa was asking us yesterday, can you ambition the Lord coming to you right now and saying to you, you are the ambassador of my son. You are the ambassador of my son. He's saying to each one of us that he wants to gather each one of his sons, as a mother hen gathers his cheek, her cheeks under his wings. He wants none of us to be lost, and he's counting on us to go out and serve, to be one of the ambassadors, 
Come unto me, all who are labored and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Sister Marina, can you please display that scripture is Matthew 11, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So this is the message that the Lord was telling us yesterday. Come unto me, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And this is the message that we are to go out and, and preach to the others. This is what the Lord wants to tell us, wants us to tell to the, the whoever is out there thinking that the Lord is angry, still angry at them. The Lord is saying, come unto me. Just like the father who was pleading, pleading to the prodigal son to come back. That's what the Lord wants us to go out and tell everyone that the Father is waiting for each one of us to come back to him. We're labor because we're lost, but we can find rest if we go back to him. And if we take his yoke, his yoke is not heavy, but it's easy. Um, Papa gave us a, an example yesterday that was really hard to hear, but it, it, is, it is what we sometimes we need to hear so that we can understand the urgency of, of this message. Papa said that he had experienced himself how many times this parable of the prodigal son has become true in front of his eyes. And he gave us an example of a beautiful son of, of God, a young boy who was in drugs, and he was sent to the retreat and he didn't want to stay in the retreat. And he was sent to the retreat center, sorry, to the rehab center. And he came out of the rehab center denying medical care. And the same night he went and took up, gave off his life. So when a person is not willing to reconcile, that's why the Father is pleading and pleading and pleading to us. The Father keeps pleading to us. And he says, I must have an answer for you. Do not delay. Please do not refuse. Do not refuse what I'm pleading to you. Come to me because you're so close. You have come so close to the border. And if you do not turn, there will be no more fears. Because the moment that we cross the border, there is no turning back to Christ. There you will be destined to go to hell. That is what happened, What is happening every day when we go out and we preach the message of Christ. It comes down to an answer. It comes down to a yes or a not. And that yes means that a soul has been saved. And a no means that that soul is on his way to hell. So the question yesterday was, do you want to be them or you want to be safe? And that is what Jesus said. There is a thief. The thief comes only to kill and destroy. And nobody knows to still kill and destroy. And nobody knows when the thief will come. Are you waiting for a convenient season? Are you waiting to come back and put the time to study and labor on the word of God when you have more time available on your work? That's a light of the devil. He will keep presenting you with less and less and less time available. Even when you have free time, trust me, and you want to sit down, the devil is going to try to distract you, saying, oh, you have to clean, oh, you have to get up, oh, you have to cook, oh, you have to this, do whatever. You so there is no convenient season. There will not be a more convenient season or a more convenient place. 
And we have been called because there is an urgency. There is people that is out there, out of hope. They're in trouble, they're in darkness, and they are about to take off this light, give up their life. The place is now, we've been reminding yesterday, the place is now, the time is now. The Father is taking the time and the blessings and the anointing and he's saying to us now, now be reconciled, now be restored, now be forgiven. Do not stay in that guiltiness and condemnation because that doesn't come from the Lord. It is not you that can make yourself whole. This is what the Father is pleading. This is what the Father is asking us, the ambassadors, to plead through our mouth to go out and tell our brethren that the time is now, the place is now, now we can be reconciled. Now we are being called to be restored. Now, today, today, the Father is standing his arms for us to be forgiven. There was a point where Papa was explaining to us that the Bible talks about shaking your feet or dusting your feet and go to the next city and the next city meant the next person. So the word is saying that someone, when, that when someone does not believe or does not agree, you can dust your feet and go to the next city. But you have to be clear that we have the responsibility of that soul. You have done your job and maybe the person does not agree. But the father never gives up on us. He keeps pleading and pleading. But the problem here or the most critical point is what happens to the one who are ambassadors and never went out to save us soul? What happened to us who have been given all this gift Grace after grace, every day that we come, and um, revelations after revelations are being given to us, and sometimes we don't even have the time to go back and review our notes. Christ had commissioned us to make disciples, disciples in every in every nation, every nation. So, how much of grace that we've been given and God has been pouring to us are we just keep willing to let go, waste it? When we do not use the grace that God has given us, our heart grows hard. If you think you're going to come in here and just wait and wait and wait until we know the Bible really well, there's going to be a point where the word of God is not going to move you anymore. You have to take action. You have to put yourself in the line. You have to go there. You have to have that availability to, to the Lord. You have to be willing to make mistakes, it is painful. But the, when we fall, we have also been taught lately, when we fall now, when we are ambassadors for Christ, when we're living in Christ, when we're new creatures, when we fall, we fall inside the ark. But if you do not move to the next step, if you keep having this grace after grace that the Lord is giving to you all these beautiful revelations and you're not willing to go out and try to save the, the ones who are in darkness, there is no other way your heart will grow hard. So should I keep the lifting the white flag up? Yes, the white flag means... Today is the date of mercy and compassion. Today is the day of grace. Mercy is still knocking at the door of our hearts. God speaks to us, but be aware because also the stranger trying to speak is always trying to speak to the ambassador as well. So as God is speaking to an ambassador, the stranger is also speaking to the same person. But the stranger is trying to tell us that the gospel is not truth. Or maybe the stranger is trying to tell us what we just said before, that you are to wait for a more convenient time. That you are to wait for a more convenient space, for a more convenient place. That is what the devil comes to do. 
to bring unbelief, doubt, to make you feel that you're weak, you're not prepared, you're not enough. And in this unbelief is that, that when we feel that we're not ready to believe is when we can get lost again. It is in that unbelief that the person is willing to believe the thief. That's what the devil does. You, when he says you're not enough, yes, you heard the gospel, yes, you, you felt that you went to that retreat and you felt you're chosen, you're anointed, but you keep doing this and that, you keep repeating this mistake, you don't know the Bible, you don't really have in your heart to, to help people, or you have to wait until you have resources to go and donate to someone else. He wants you to believe you are not capable to carry this. He wants you to believe in him, in the lies, so that you can reject Jesus. And once that you have rejected Jesus, there is no much left for you. You will be cut off, said Papa yesterday. There is absolutely no escape. Today the Lord is pleading to us, all the ambassadors around the world. Are you willing to stand for Christ and proclaim the good news to everyone? Are you seeing that everyone is so lost? The lies out there, an economical crisis, or maybe a war, or maybe a pandemic state, maybe sickness, whatever it is, it represents darkness. It doesn't represent the love and the light of the gospel. How much are we to wait before the others go to sleep, meaning to go to that? Let us always be filled with the grace to proclaim the gospel so that we not only enjoy the treasures of heaven, but we also, also, until our very last breath, we go and we still win souls for the kingdom of heaven. And Papa said, this message I'm giving you is so deep that it will take weeks and months and months to penetrate and bear fruit in abundance. So ambassadors, the key here is God has called you. Your priority is to get the word in your system and share the same word to others to bring them back into the Lord. Papa gave us, an, gave us another example, beautiful example yesterday of how these priests that they went to visit had accepted the, the anointing of the Lord and the assignment of the Lord, and he decided to convert the place that was given to him into a hospital. And he prayed to the Lord to receive the resources, and the Lord has put in his heart to collect doctors, specialists, that even though are not Christians, they're dedicated to go in there and help people without gaining any economical, any economical benefit. And Papa was telling the, the priest, oh my Lord, oh Father, we have all these resources, but we lack wisdom. And the father was explaining to Papa, yes, there should be always someone who can make a plan. People is being operated in there with high technology. And the laborers that are in there, the doctors that are in there are absolutely free. They don't want to call, they don't want to charge for their labor. The payment is minimal only for the medical equipment. And the beautiful thing that they say is that 90%, 95% of the women are delivering babies naturally, which is something that when we go to cities, is something that is almost being stole to us. We have been lied, especially to, to women. We have been lied. Again, the devil wants to tell us that we're weak, that we don't have the strength. And women usually are going into C-sections when it's not necessary and is out of impatience. So use the word of God, use your prayers, Use your word, take your authority, take your authority and use the protection of the armor of God if you're in that situation and pray to the Lord to have a natural delivery. Is your right? 
Papa was telling us that the doctors, some of the doctors are available in there, sometimes 24 seven. And he gave this example just to give us another way, show us another way of how this beautiful son of God, this priest has become an ambassador and he has used his mouth and his, his whole body and his whole soul and heart to have this vision. The doctors are not Christians. They're not Christian, but surely they're willing to help people. This is another beautiful example of how is that we as an ambassador are, are to go out and use our resources. So we went out, uh, we went to, to review Proverbs, Proverbs 29, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. And we were closing the teaching there with having a vision, like these beautiful priests have converted this space that only had five rooms into a hospital so that he's helping people to get operated on with this beautiful technology that who would have cost lots, but because of his vision, things happen so beautiful. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he, that kept the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish, but he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate. Can you move the AMPC a little bit more up, uh, Sister Marina? And enviable is he. So Papa was saying us yesterday, reminding us, let us let us work together, having visions, having these visions to save the souls, using our resources. Pray to the Lord to give you a good vision. God has made each one of us a visionary. He has made us an ambassador, not only to preach the gospel but to go and give this love, this love to others so that we are able through the love of God to melt the hardness on, in their hearts to those who are receiving the gospel. Let us work together having a beautiful vision of having saving souls and be the vision of solving people's problem. And Papa said yesterday, maybe your vision is small, but put it out there. Put your availability to the Lord and you'll see how the Lord will transform it, will transform that small vision, that small seed into a beautiful tree where birds will come and nest and people will rest under that tree. We just need to make the commitment, have the availability for God. And we have to say to him, God, I'm willing to work for you. And we will be surprised. He will take that small seed and turn it into a beautiful project, into a beautiful tree. Come to the Father. You are the tree. If you're listening today, we are those trees that are being called. We have been prepared. We have the potential. You have the position. You have the preparation. You have the training. Let us go and pass the test and get into victory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Shall we go 
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.